Hi guys, fair warning. In this video, there's gonna be a lot of sanding. All of that sanding is of course gonna take place on the hull of my new sailboat, Athena. But before we head over there, uh, in the last video I mentioned that I have the second part of the trip from Scotland back home to Denmark ready for you guys this weekend. Well, I'm sorry guys, but my focus this week has been on sanding. I do have a rough edit and a basic script for the video, and that, that's also a very good reason why I haven't been able to shoot the voiceover I need to finish the video this weekend. And uh, that reason is this. Yep, there's a music festival in my backyard, that's to say right next to the marina. It is ridiculously loud, and uh, yeah, there's no way I could shoot audio without that stuff getting on there too. So hopefully I'll have the second part of the trip ready for you guys next weekend. But enough yammering on, let's head on over to Athena. Invite a few thousand people into your backyard and this is the thanks you get. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's actually kind of fun to see the marina this packed and uh, full of life. I can't really blame the state of my car on the guests, but uh, it sure is a big mess. As you can see, I'm not done yet, but progress is being made. I do have a full-time job, so I'm a bit limited in the number of hours I can put in sanding. And thank God for that! <laughs> Before I really get into this video, let me just get a bit of sanding out of the way. In a few hours it's gonna be 30 degrees Celsius, that's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And for a wimp like me, that gets a bit uncomfortable. So uh, I wanna take advantage of the fact that it's still nice and cool. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, that took me an hour and 40 minutes, roughly. <sighs> In the previous video, I told you guys that the forward one-third of the hull had a few layers of extra fiberglass applied when they peeled the gel coat back about eight or nine years ago. Whenever I'm sanding those areas, uh, something kind of interesting happens. As soon as I've sanded off the barrier coat, these wet dots appear. And as you can hopefully see here, in behind that little wet dot is a void. So it seems quite obvious that the yard that laid out that fiberglass didn't wet it out thoroughly, but that's not really the interesting part. The interesting part is the fact that the liquid in there, it doesn't have the smell like, like the other blisters of vinegar, and it doesn't taste like hydrochloric acid either. It's just like stale water, basically. I imagine what's happening is that water gets trapped in those tiny voids, but that water doesn't reach the hull because there's a layer of uh, epoxy there, and of course epoxy degrades far slower in contact with water than polyester does. So I think that's why that liquid is basically just like stale water and not like the vinegary stuff uh, from the other blisters. In the previous video I asked you guys for some suggestions as to what tools you thought might be uh, good at removing both the anti-fouling and the barrier coat. And I've tried out some of those tools, so uh, let's see how they've fared. I would have loved to test out all the suggestions that you guys made, but I've chosen to stick with tools that I either already owned or that I could borrow, because I don't plan on doing this again anytime soon. Hopefully this is gonna be a one-time deal for me, so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on tools. First up is the random orbital sander I started out using, and this thing is pretty slow at removing material. It leaves a nice smooth surface though, and it is also pretty lightweight. For the bulk of the sanding I've done on the hull, I've used this band sander. This thing is built like a tank. It weighs a ton, but it removes a lot of material really quickly. I've also tried using one of these sanding adapters for my angle grinder. Now, unfortunately, I was only able to find this small adapter, but uh, I'll get back to that a little later on. And I've also tried using some different kinds of scrapers. These things are really slow and they make a horrible noise when you're using them. The band sander is super powerful and on more than one occasion it's taken me for a bit of a walk, but uh, it does remove a lot of material fast and the uh, orbital sander is good for the finishing touch. However, I seem to be getting better and better at controlling the band sander, so perhaps I don't even need the random orbital sander after all, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Quite a few of you guys suggested that I get a sanding adapter for my angle grinder, something like this, but only bigger. And I do have one of those big varial speed angle grinders, which I thought would be perfect for, for this project. But I called four different hardware stores and uh, three of them had never heard of such a product and the fourth, well they had this tiny one but they'd never heard of, of a bigger version of this. So 
Yeah, I don't know if that's a regional thing where sanding adapters are widely used in the US and not at all used over here or what's up with that, but sadly the only thing I was able to get my hands on was this little guy. And because of the small surface area here, this sticks in really fast, so I don't really like using this. When sanding anti-fouling, I'm required for environmental reasons to hook up whatever tool I'm using to a vacuum. Now that hose, the vacuum hose, was briefly visible in the last video. So what I did in the last video was I sanded off a large area of anti-fouling. I didn't sand through the barrier coat at that point in time. I then proceeded to remove the hose from the random orbital sander because that hose limits my movement with the tools quite a lot. So the dust I was covered in in this previous video was actually from the barrier coat and not the anti-fouling. I do believe that the uh, dust from the barrier coat, not the anti-fouling, is relatively inert when it comes to skin contact. And please also remember that this is not my full-time job, so my exposure here in the grand schemes of things is sort of very limited. Having said that, of course, I do wear a mask and some other protection as you've seen. Since shooting the previous video, I've got my hands on a different vacuum with a much, much longer hose. And having that extra long hose, well, that makes all the difference. I think that's just about all the procrastinating I'm comfortable with, so uh, let's get back to sanding. I've managed to sand a bit more, but unfortunately the wind has picked up and it's blowing the dust directly into my face, so uh, I think it's time for a bit of a break. Fortunately, someone left behind this wheelbarrow, which is perfect for relaxing in. As you guys have seen on the video from today, I've been wearing one of these uh, protective suits, but the, this is actually my second attempt, because yesterday I was wearing this thing, which uh, turned out to be as effective as a sieve. So the good thing about the suit I've been wearing today is that it doesn't let dust get through. The bad thing about the suit I've been wearing today is it's basically like wearing a huge plastic bag. It gets super damp in there. So for keeping away dust, apparently it's very important that it's a type 5 protective suit. Just in case anybody's curious. I'm pretty sure you guys in the US have totally different classifications for protective clothing, but uh, yeah, over here it's called a type 5. As you can probably tell by the lack of dust in my face, something has happened. I've just swung by the boat and grabbed some, some lunch. It turns out it wasn't actually the wind that was to blame for all of the dust I had in my face. The vacuum I had bought, the, the bag in that vacuum was full, so uh, yeah. I think I'm gonna hold off on resuming the adventure that is sanding until I've got a new bag for that vacuum, because having that vacuum actually helps a lot with dust. On the previous video, a few of you guys commented asking why I wouldn't just fix the individual blisters instead of going through the trouble of sanding off all of the old barrier coat. Well, there are thousands of blisters, it would take forever to fix them individually. And uh, also, the barrier coat has obviously failed because there are tons of blisters and also the moisture level inside the laminate is quite high. And, uh, let me show you. This is what I'll use to monitor the moisture levels inside the laminate. This is a non-destructive moisture detector and it's specifically calibrated for GRP laminate. So this should be a big help, but let's go grab some measurements. Oh, as you can hear by that angry beeping sound, not all this well. There is a fair bit of moisture in there, but uh, it looks like it's starting to drop. It's around 70 on the comparative scale here, and I'll go into more detail about this instrument in a later video. The moisture levels in the hull are a bit high, but thanks to my new moisture meter, I can keep an eye on them. And it goes without saying that I'm not going to start treating the hull until those moisture levels have dropped severely. I'd like to stress that this is my first time working on a hull that has had a bit of osmosis and this is turning out to be a very interesting project because there are so many different opinions and theories out there as to what causes osmosis and hydrolysis and whether or not high moisture content in a laminate is a death sentence or not. And don't even get me started on all of the different theories and opinions on how to treat a hull that has had osmosis, whether it just be gel coat blistering, which is basically what I have here, or severe delamination. There's just a ton of conflicting information out there, so yeah, this is going to be a really interesting project. Going off of what I've read on the internet and also the comments, messages and emails I've received, not even the definition of what constitutes osmosis seems to be agreed upon. Now around here the definition seems to be if you've got blisters on your hull and you open up one of those blisters and it's got an acidic liquid in there that smells like vinegar, well then you've got osmosis, so that's why I'm using the term osmosis. Okay guys, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm heading back to Obelix. I want to get busy editing this video and hopefully you will see this later tonight. Before ending this video, I want to thank you for all the awesome feedback on the last video. 
I appreciate it very much and please know that every single comment and thumbs up brings a smile to my face. Other than that, that's it for this video guys. See you! Jukul and I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more videos like it, click subscribe. Please consider leaving a comment and a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot and I appreciate your support very much. If you're new to the channel, please check out the introduction playlist. If you want to watch every single video I've ever published, check out the playlist named All Videos. It contains every single video listed in chronological order.